Welcome to the Grow Your Business podcast. Listen in as we discuss all things business, growth and marketing with business owners, thought leaders and entrepreneurs. And now, here's your host, founder of Roundhouse, the creative agency, Saul Edmonds. Oh, hi, everyone, and welcome to the Grow Your Business podcast. Today, I'm speaking with the uh, wonderful Paul Farmer, yet again, from the Mentorist Group, around the topic of when you value you, you value your business. Paul, how are you going today? Good, thanks, Saul. How are you doing? Yeah, really good. Great to have you on. This is number three. Wow. Good things come in threes, don't they? So, you know, who said, who said lightning? I think last time I, uh, I said lightning doesn't strike twice. Well, you know what? Who says it doesn't strike three times? It does. And probably more too. So we've got um, usually, usually at this point, um, our guests on the podcast, Paul would usually go through um, an intro about himself, which we'll still do. But because Paul's been on a few times now, Paul, you can make it as, as short or as long as you like, but then we might have a bit more time to get into the, the topic just about who you are, Mentorist Group, and, and so forth. Thanks, Saul. Uh, yeah, for those that haven't heard me speak before and know nothing about Mentorist Group, um, I've got a background. I'm an accountant, which after 45 minutes, you may sit there and go, you Generally, don't, you don't sound like an accountant, uh, which I get quite a lot. So um, I have an accounting background, which then led to finance, which led to strategy, which led to leadership, which that then led to starting my own business. So I have a small, small to medium size business background from an accounting strategy point of view. I have a corporate background from oil and gas from a business planning slash forecasting slash strategy slash leadership um, from the oil and gas both here in the UK and then um, back here post-UK. And then now I, I run Mentorist Group and we focus on changing lives one business at a time. And I actually came up with that this morning, funnily enough, um, because... I've been, just been revisiting re some of the clients that I'm working with and some of the clients I have worked with. And what we do is we literally change the way they see their view of the world to, to be something that becomes something that they are able to uh, get more value out of what they're doing. So we predominantly work with, as I say, small to medium sized businesses. Um, generally, they, they're not big enough to have a board, which means that they still need to have that management slash strategic conversation. But internally, they don't have that resource. So it's like having an ex, an outsourced IT department. Mm. Exactly the same. It's rather than having someone sitting in your business 24-7 doing what it is that we do, we're able to provide an independent perspective on the strategic part of the business, but also add business coaching uh, and some mentoring in that as well. Yeah. So to be able to be able to to have that, you don't need it twenty four seven, but to be able to have that sounding board. So you know, once a month, twice a month, three times a month, whatever it is, it's that ability to have that conversation with someone that's not in your business to be able to go, okay, I need to be able to move forward but I need to have a conversation with someone to be able to do that. Who do I have that with around strategy? Oh, mentorist group. Gotcha. Right. I have the conversation, de bottleneck and be able to then move forward to correct the momentum and get the results that you want. And, and the value too, which is then I guess the perfect segue into the topic for the conversation too, because you could, you know, um, one of the first things I was going to, sort of talk about um, and to get your thoughts on with, with all of this is, is the idea of um, how easy it is to lose sight of yourself when you're in, in the business, like when you're inside the business working inside it. So having, having someone or, you know, things that add value, which, you know, is in, in your case, it's having a person like yourself, working with you to, to add value 
in turn, like, do you think that, that, I um, guess this is um, something that I've, I've kind of thought about over time too, is that does that process of, um, you participating assist sometimes in some way with people realizing then their own value within the business even? I don't say hundred percent. It's generally when you're in the thick of everything, you tend to only see your view of what's going on. Mm. And by having someone external, they can then ask the question from an independent perspective of, okay. And I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you an example. If we're talking about a business owner who is constantly challenged by time, mm. I don't have, I don't have enough time. Uh, you know, you, you hear that every day, you know, I yeah, it's like most people really, isn't this. it? I don't have the time to do this. I don't have the time to do that. It's I've got, I haven't got enough hours in the day. Well, if you sit back and look at it, we all have the same amount of time in every day. You know, some people don't get 25 hours and some people don't get 23 hours. We all get 24 hours in a day. So it's less about, I don't have enough time. It's just about being efficient with the time that you have. Mm. And so when we think about, you know, we're talking about valuing us to be able to value our business, then we need to get really clear on where we are spending our time and how valuable our time actually is. And I was having this conversation with a business owner last week and, and I said, let's, you know, let's play a game. I like to say that because it makes it, uh, makes it a little different to say, well, let's look at this situation. So let's play a game. Let's say that, uh, that you, your hourly rate was $250 an hour. Would you pay someone $250 an hour to do some of the activities that you're currently doing? And the answer was, hell no. I'd pay someone, you know, $25 an hour to do that. And I said, well, at the moment you're paying someone $250 an hour to do that exact activity. Mm. So I said, you've got a choice. You can either continue doing something that you would pay someone $25 an hour to do, or you can choose to look at where you're spending your time and go, well, if I was to pay that person or a person, $25 $25 an hour, whether it's internal, external, wherever, if I was to pay them some $25 an hour to do that, that would buy me an hour to be able to do things at $250 an hour. And so recognizing that ultimately where we spend our time should be where we are able to generate the most value within our business. Now value doesn't have to always be financial Mm. and we'll touch on that a little bit later. Yeah. So for for me, for me, it's about if you value your time, you'll spend your time where it is most valuable and able to generate. If you want to grow your business, then where do you need to spend your time? You spend your time in a position where you're able to grow the business. So whether it's being as being in business development or a sales role or client facing or whatever it is, looking at your schedule and go, well, how do I spend more of my time in that space as opposed to doing the bookkeeping, as opposed to do, typing letters, as opposed to picking up materials to take to a, a job site and say, you know, I'm at 250 bucks an hour. Would I pay someone to do that in uh, in my business? Generally, the answer is no. So, getting clear about how valuable your time is, and say, so, well, if my time's valuable, where should I spend my time? Yeah, yeah, and I mean, it it is. I'm sure, um, yeah, me included. It's very easy to lose, you know, sight. Not only, like I said, of yourself like your role even within the business because you're so busy doing things within the business that you then you know lose sight of I guess like what the topic of this podcast is all about the idea of 
value even in itself because it's only you know it's like the the term that you hear a lot about like you have to love yourself first i mean it's it's a similar i guess in some ways there's a crossover there's a similar kind of idea but with maybe the difference that when you're valuing things like you're saying you're coming to a realization about what you're actually worth and how how best you know your role within the business too you're not just like an island in yeah. in the business like you either then are the business or you're in a, a a part of it so to um you know is is it right to say like it it's obviously very different for different businesses and industries but you know having some realization maybe even you know whether it's at the start of somebody's business or like five or six years in of people you know then actually going i've been doing this you know series of jobs or roles within the business for so long that you've never actually sat back and evaluated yeah how one how effective it is what i'm doing because you've just been doing it and then you know, to, I mean, like you were saying, like how, how much, you know, even if you're talking about how much profit, you know, is from what I'm doing, what impact is that having, you know, can that be done by somebody else? Like, as you were saying, far better and far more efficiently and with less cost overall. Which, which will also then free you up to be able to do the stuff that you love to do. Yeah, well, that's right. That's then like the, the, uh, which kind of is, you know, that's something I know this is, is, this is something that's very, um, I guess hard to quantify, but just even the idea, like how important do you think we're in, in this picture of, you know, valuing yourself and business of just simply being happy? Like how underrated is that as, as an idea? you look at the amount of hours that we spend in our business. Would you choose to walk into somewhere for that same amount of time, knowing that you're going to be in an unhappy environment? Hmm. Would you knowingly go, well, for the next 40 years, I'm going to spend my, my time in an environment where I'm just going to gradually get more unhappy, more unhappy, more unhappy. Hmm. If someone said to you in that in that way, you you know you're about to choose to do this. Are you are you sit there? And go, oh yeah, I'm stoked. Can't wait. Um, so so for me, and it, it sort of goes back to the conversation we had earlier this morning in terms of for me, it's about getting clear what that feeling is that you want, even before you you step into your business. It's getting clear on that feeling that at the end of the day, I want, regardless of what I'm doing, I want that happiness inside of me that I can sit there and go, oh, you know what? Geez, that feels good. Or I feel good. Or whatever it is. It's like whatever that feeling is that that you want as a human, going, okay, well, that's, that's the feeling that I want. Now, most people generally use their business as a way to try and create that happiness. Let's, let's say it's happiness that you're after. Mm. Most, most people tend to try and use their business as a vehicle to create that feeling that they want. Mm. Because, and you, you think about it, if you're in a business and your business is in flow, how good does that feel? It feels so good. Mm. You are, you're in a position where stuff's happening and clients are ringing you going, yep, we want to sign you up. Let's get on with the work. You're doing interesting work. You're dealing with good clients. Your team's working. Everything's in flow. The money's coming in and you, you know, you, you're able to take regular holidays and things like that. How good does that feel? Awesome. But on the other side, when the business isn't doing so well and things are challenging, things are tough, what sort of feeling do we have then? We feel like crap mm. because we're not in flow. But the interesting thing is, is the fact that that space there, we can choose to be happy regardless of whatever we're doing. Mm. 
So yeah. you don't need you don't need your business or anything to to be able to choose to be happy. So yeah, yeah. and that is the, yeah. If you've yeah, got the ability, that's what we were saying to, this morning, yeah. yeah. If you've got the ability to to be happy, and if you choose to be happy, then choose to be happy. But then you can take that, and you can then work that into your business. So as you're doing more things in your business that are making you happy, and so one of the things that we talk about is looking at the things in your business that truly make you happy to be able to continue that space that you want to be in and go, well, okay, we'll find the stuff that you want to do more of that you're good at, that value adds that all of that and go, well, how do I go about getting myself in a position where I can do more of that? Hmm. And if, and if that means, outsourcing if that means getting a bookkeeper if that means you know buying time for you to be able to spend more time doing business development building relationships doing things on that space then it's okay well, what team do we need to be able to do all the other stuff to allow you to be into that space because at the end of the day it's your business mm. do you go do you go into business to do all the all the crap work so everyone else can do all the, all the fun stuff that, that you want to do but you can't do it because of the fact that you're spending all your time doing all the other rubbish whereas you know what it's your business you started it for a reason hmm. you wanted you started the business to be able to have some sort of feeling that you couldn't have where you were previously and so like you're not buggering i'm going to start a business cool What's it going to give me? It's going to give me flexibility. It's going to give me, you know, happiness. I'm going to be in control. It's going to give me all of these things. But when we get busy and we and we grow and it may not be managed in the right way, then we start to find that we start to do all the rubbish stuff because that's stuff that has to be done. But we choose to do that as opposed to choosing to have someone who, who might be a specialist in that Mm. take that stuff on to free your time up to do the stuff that you want to do. What would you say, Paul? Could I just like, um, I'm going to play uh, the devil's advocate here. These are, these are thoughts that, you know, maybe sure. I guess I've, I've, I've had in the past too. And I, you know, you're having conversations with people and you hear people say this as they would go, well, that's great, Paul, but you know, I don't have enough money to employ this other person. I'm super busy. That's fine for you. Like I'm, I'm, I'm really stressed out. What would you say to, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've probably had being in your position, you would have had similar conversations. Like what do you actually say to people when they push back and sort of say, well, that's, that's okay. Saying that that sounds like a great plan but my reality is this like what do you say to them but you've chosen your reality mm. that's what i'm saying you, you've chosen your you you choose to take on the clients that you take on which has created your busyness so if you're not able to handle the clients that you're that are coming at you you can choose to say no yeah. Or then, or then if they say, um, for example, on, on the flip side, if they go, well, you know, um, I don't, I don't have enough work, but they're quite, but you know, people, cause a lot of people I think anyway are aware that they obviously need help and they, you know, would, would probably hugely benefit from certain things, but then they go, well, I have to do this. There's nobody else in the business that can, do that what would you say to them like if, if they're saying if they aren't in the position of sort of having lots of work and they're super busy if it's at the other end of things and they're saying but like i have to do this like what's my solution paul you know to this so like, what would you say but each each solution is the, each business each business is different hmm. if i'm in a position where i'm not financially able to look at external uh resources then you prioritize where do i where do i need to spend my time and if my if, if i need to spend my time building getting clients getting business then that's where i spend my time hmm. 
You know, it's looking at where you, because again, we've all got the same amount of time. Yep. And so in situations like that, if I'm, if I don't have the business coming in the front door, then yes, obviously it's going to be a matter of saying, well, where is the priority that, where do I, where are my resources going to be best applied? And if that's building customers to then at a point in time, be able to say, okay, well, here is, here is an opportunity for me to have someone to take on some of this work. But then at the same time, as soon as you start to get into that space of we need to get more customers, then is that a skill that you have? Maybe mm. you don't. So then you go, well, am I in a space where, where I'm able to grow my business, but maybe that's not my specialty. Mm. So then where do I allocate my funds? And so again, it, 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 every business is different. You can have someone that's very good at doing, but they, have, they, they don't know how to sell, mm. which may be one of the reasons why they don't have as many customers because they don't know how to attract customers to their, to their business and have them join, join their business. Yeah. So then you say, well, you know, that business, the difference is that they need someone externally who can help them grow their business. But then you also have others who will be good at selling, but are rubbish at admin. So then potentially they will need someone to be able to take on some of the admin roles. So as I said, as I say, to be able to grow your business, you've got to look at where your priorities are. And if your priorities are to build your client base, then that's where your focus should be. But at the same time, you've then got to think, well, how do I create more time to spend on that? Yeah. And then do I then say, okay, well, are there ways that I can look at having someone be able to come in and take some of that time off me? Yeah, I guess it does. That does, you know, highlight, you know, you you speaking about, you know, things in this particular way, I dare say, and this is, I guess, from personal experience too, is it it always sounds like it would be the things that, you should be thinking inside your own head because they're all, yeah, they're very, very sensible. They, there's, you know, it's sort of common sense, great solid sort of strategy, but it highlights the power of a third party like yourself to actually point these things out. Like it's, it's a very, it's like such a, I still, I guess kind of marvel at how that happens because when we're talking about it, it always seems like, well, yeah, of of course, but the power of, of that realization, just when you introduce another person in to say who's who's able to look at it without out the constraints of, you know, your history in the business and like all the other things that um, you know, are going on inside your brain, you can just look at it in a objective sort of way. I think it's like yeah. super, super powerful. Yeah. I mean, standing outside looking in, I mean, you know, and also bringing 25 plus years of experience in different fields and different areas and different countries and, and looking at from the outside and bringing that experience to the window and going, well, yeah, you know, they're, they're, this is the way that you see things in your business at the moment. At the same time, it's, you know what, maybe, maybe your view of the world may not necessarily be getting you the best results at the moment. And so you then ask the business owners to, you know, to have to get clarity around what it is that they are doing and what's stopping them and where their priorities are. Because, you know, it's not my it's not my job to tell someone what they should do. It's my job to help them see where they're focusing and go, well, is that the most beneficial place for them to focus their, their attention, their resources, their, you know, are they getting frustrated because they're not getting any sales? Well, how much time do you spend in the sales process? Well, mm. not, not much. Okay. Well, maybe that might lead 
to show why you're getting frustrated because you're spending no time in something but expecting to get a get a good result. Mm. So you know, from a from a perspective, in, in independent perspective, it just it's so valuable to be able to stand on the outside and look in and go, oh, you know what? My view of the world is this. Your view of the world is that. Tell me what your view of the world is, and then I'll get an understanding of where you're coming from, and then I can throw some different options into the mix to help you see that maybe there is more than just one way to view a certain thing. Yeah. Is, is that um, talking about then, you know, in the actual topic of the podcast, like valuing you and then valuing your business, how do you see that at the, I guess, once again, the importance of that in the context of then, when you do that, like when you have a maybe like a a better realization of of what your value even is of the effect then in turn that that has on others within in the business, if there's other people in the business then too like that that i mean a flow on effect of of your initial like self realization how that have you seen any um uh you know if specific you, if you if you, if you value you, then people will get to see that you are valuing you. So as an example, if you're prepared to say no to a customer, mm. to a client, for example, then your teams get to see that we don't work with everyone. Mm. So they then get, it's like, oh, well, why? It's a, are they our, our ideal customer? No, because if they were to be part of you know one of our one of our customers, we would have to then deal with this 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 and this, and they then go, oh okay, I get it. Well, I'm glad we're not working with them. Mm. You know, I was talking to a client uh, last week. They they had someone who um, who had asked them to quote for some work. Um, they um, they quoted for the work. Oh, probably six months ago, they said no. But then, can we do this? And then they've come back six months later and said, "Oh, can we, can we actually come back to you and get you to requote?" And they said yes, but it'll be X. Um, and the question was, do we actually want them as a client? If the answer was, if we didn't value ourselves in that situation, then we would have gone back to the original quote in November and we would have said, yep, we can do it for that. Let's get on and let's do it. Whereas things have moved on. Things are more expensive. Things are harder to get. Um, you know, prices have gone up. And so if we'd have just gone back and said, we'll do it for what we said, we'd do it in November, then the business would have suffered because it would have been at November pricing, not July 2020 pricing. Mm. And so in that situation, if I wasn't prepared to value myself, I would have gone back to them and gone, yeah, sure, we'll do it at that pricing. And then I would have been the one that would have suffered because I wouldn't have made the margin. I'd, it would have been a loss. It would have been, you know, all of these things. So ensuring that you are valuing you and your time and your money and your resources if you're valuing that, then being able to say no or being able to say, you know what, at that stage, that's where we were, but now this is where we are and this is why it is the price of what it is. Bang, 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 bang. If they then choose, because then it's up to them to make the decision whether they choose to work with you or not, you're not saying no, you're giving them an opportunity to choose whether they do or they don't. But by you valuing yourself, at a particular point, then if they take that work on, it'll be at your pricing and you'll make the margins that you're looking to make, which means your business will then be in a better position than if you accept it at the old pricing and it's going to cost you to actually do the job. I guess that also ties into 
into respect too, doesn't it? In, in, into like a respect for yourself, like for your own worth, which in, in turn is everything yeah. we're talking about. And then also in a strange kind of way, like for the client too, because even if you've got, you know, if, if you, you know, said you were doing something and then you've, you know, and there's been a change, it still flows in to some extent into you being true to your word and, and trust and all those common, you know, human sort of things that everybody regards highly, you know, that's no, it's no different in, in business. People still recognize that. No, no, no different whatsoever. You know, that integrity that, you know, by having that, like by a loving yourself and valuing yourself, be coming from that space, then, you know, if, if I'm in a position where I manage the expectations up front before any work gets done, it's like, okay, well, let's have a conversation about what this is going to look like. Um, then the client has a, an opportunity to say yes or no. Hmm. But what tends to happen is we tend to say, okay, well, okay, yeah, we'll take that work on. And then we start to do a bunch of work and then all of a sudden we go, oh, hang on, we haven't had a conversation about what it's going to cost. And then we go, oh, actually, I feel uncomfortable. So I'll just keep going and we'll get to the end and then I'll send them a, an invoice and they'll go, oh, actually, that's not what I thought it was going to be. And, and then you cool. go, well, then I've got to discount it or then I've got, oh, okay, that whole, you know, so to be able to stand at the start of the process, valuing yourself to go before we kick off, we just want to get some expectations locked in up front so that we can then know what we're doing going forward. And mm. if you value yourself, you'll, you'll have that conversation or you'll have a conversation that says, well, this is what we're doing. If they say, well, that's not really for us. You'll then go, well, maybe we're not going to be able to work together. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to say, no, I can refer you to someone else, but I'm going to have to, at this, in, at this point in time, um, that doesn't fit into the way that we're going from our, from our business direction. And, you know, so I, I'm happy to refer you on to someone, but that doesn't fit in with what we're doing. Or you take, take it on and you know they're going to be a painful client. They're not going to pay their, you know, all of this. But you know what, if I say no, then, you know, they're probably going to tell someone else that I said no and they're not going to like me and then someone else isn't going to like me and then all of a sudden I'm, I don't feel like I'm good enough. But because I've said no, then that person, then that person, then that person is like, oh, well, they told me they couldn't do it. And you value yourself, you be up front and you just go, this is, this is the expectation to, to be a client of ours. This is what you expect from us. This is what we expect from you. And this is the, the pricing of it. Up to you. If you, and if you. if you feel that's what you want, then let's move ahead. Otherwise, let's, let's agree to, to move on and, and you know, work some, with, with other people. Yeah. I think for the most part, people, I mean, most people in my experience respect that. They, they're like, you know, absolutely fine with that. That is, I think, the... I mean, this is just my experience. I think there's, it's really the minority of people like who, who then are like you were describing. I mean, I, I've, I've certainly, I, maybe this is a trait of you know, when you're starting a business and you aren't as, as confident in certain areas and you maybe, you know, want more, more work and you feel that you have to do, you know, things differently to get that sort of work that that because I, I I certainly remember feeling that way like in very very early days you know but as which I, I suppose that comes with time like a lot of things you become more confident in yourself and kind of what you know who you are which once again like you know ties back into what we're talking about in that value of, of just kind of feeling comfortable in your own skin about who you are it's an awareness. An awareness, yeah. Your awareness yeah, exactly. grows as you, as you move through, you know, stages of life. Your awareness of you becomes uh, stronger, which then means that, as you were saying then, in your business, you, over time, you've grown 
to value yourself, which means that you look at the clients that you want to work with and don't want to work with, and you're able to choose the ones that you would like to work with. As opposed to when you start, you've got to be all things to everyone because mm. you don't have that constant stream of people coming to you saying, can you work with us? Or then it's experience all about, too, I guess. Yeah, yeah it's you, you having to be all things to everyone. So by valuing you and being very clear on you, then, you know, we talk a lot about ideal clients. Most people think they have to work with everyone and anyone. Mm. But ultimately, you want to work with people that are going to be good to work with. They're going to pay on time. They're going to refer you to their networks. You know, they're the, they're the type of people you want to work with. But if you feel like you've got to take everyone on and there's not a match, then it's like that situation I was talking about earlier. I mean, you know, you get someone who takes a job on, then six months later, so they come back and say, you know, can we, can we do, take it on? Sure. But then at the end of the job, they hit them with a, a massive variation. And then what happens then? Hmm. You know, so being in a position where you say, well, you know what, in November it fitted into what we were doing, but now it doesn't. So I'm going to be honest, it, it doesn't fit into the way that, we, that we're operating. Yeah. So, you know, thank you, but here's someone that you can call. They, they might be able to help you out. But at the moment, or we've got too much work on and we can't get to you until, you know, January next year. Would that be, you know, we've got, we've got a booking in January, a slot that's open. Would that fit into your calendar? And if they say yes, then cool, let's lock it in. If they don't, then it's like, well, I'm sorry, but that's the earliest that we can that we can get you into the calendar. Yeah, I think people do, like we were saying before, I think people do actually, for the most part, appreciate that more given also the fact that a lot of the time, um, you know, with, I think, across the board, people don't even take the time to, let people know those things because they feel uncomfortable or they just, or they had had said something previously and then they're, and then they feel really uncomfortable. So they don't even reply to them. And so people actually don't know whether they just don't want to or, or sort of whatever. And they make assumptions then about the business. But then if you just sort of straight up people generally, especially I, I mean, I think, Generally, the uh, maybe the busier you are and the more things you have to juggle, the more appreciative you probably are of of your own time. And and for the most part, I think that flows on to other people's time too. You know, is is that if you say, well, I actually can't do this, like, a, but but still willing to help them out. Like people are, you but know, it's all a choice. Yeah, that's right. It, it, I, I used. I, I was in a workshop last week and, uh, and I, you know, I use the words choice, bro. It's all about choice, bro. It's, it's one of those things that, that, you know, we always have a choice where we spend our time. Mm. You know, a lot of people feel they don't have choice, but they do. They just choose to not see that they have a choice. Mm. Which is a choice in itself. Bro. <laughs> yeah it is and, and i say you know when looking at it if you're in your business and you don't have someone external looking in you don't see a lot of the choices that you have you just see stuff coming at you and you're scrambling to make sure that everything gets done but at the end of the day what you choose to do in your business is your choice mm. if you choose to put more people on your choice if you choose to take clients on, your choice. If you suck at sales and you choose to not invest in your sales process, your choice. Yeah. And in terms of growing your business, then, you know, if there are areas that you aren't skilled at or if there's areas that aren't working and you choose to do nothing about it, choice, bro. Choice, bro. Exactly. In fact, yeah. I I had a funny, uh, well, I wouldn't exactly call it a huge realization, but I had, although this podcast is obviously called 
grow your business, which is on the face of it about, you know, um, a range of different things is sort of open-ended enough where we're talking about things as, as we are now about, you know, things that relate to growing people's business. But I realized it's, it was actually also about not only people's business, like their, you know, their industry, what they're doing, but also what they get up to, what their approach to things is like their business about what that, you know, how they, how they look at things too. So, you know, talking that it, it seems to be inextricably intertwined the idea that especially when we're, we're talking about these particular subjects, like it's, it's a, it's what you do all the time. You're always speaking to people at, at this certain level about their businesses. And I find it really interesting because the more we talk about it and the more I especially talk to other people, even on this podcast, the more I realize that the, you know, a person's mindset, and this might seem really obvious, but their mindset and how they, um, how they think about life in general and how they approach things is, you know, inextricably intertwined with their business, whether their business is yeah. what you do, it's what I do. If you're a sports person or it's, it's all the same thing. A business is a reflection of the business owner. Mm. Simple. The fish rots from the head. <laughs> so it is, and it is, it's, you, you see now, that what you'll what you'll find is that where where a business owner isn't collected uh, connected to the business, where you've got business owners that aren't focused on the business, if they're focused on doing stuff outside the business, generally you'll find the business will suffer because the business isn't getting from the business owner what it needs. And, and so that's leadership and, though too, isn't it? But that's leadership too. Oh, but it, yeah, it's leadership, it's strategy, it's everything you know, it's wrapped up in that whole feeling of and to to put that from the other side if i was in that business and the business owner wasn't engaging with the business then where would i go to get the direction i wouldn't i'd just have to make shit up i'd have to do whatever i needed to do mm. to get myself to to be able to keep moving things moving forward and if the only time that business owner came into the business was, was when things weren't going as they should, then the business, it's going to be a, a roller coaster because it's going to keep going until it gets to a point and then all of a sudden it's going to go bang and then the business owner will come in and say, oh, what happened there? It's like, what happened to this, this, this and this? And then, and then they'll go, oh, we'll do this, 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 and then they go away again. And then you charge on again and then all of a sudden they come back because something else happens and then something else happens. And so if the business owner was actually focused on – on wanting the business to be successful and being in that space, then they would be there and they would be in the space. They give the leadership, they give the strategy, they give the direction and they'd be focused on building a business. Yeah. I guess that also, um, cause the, the term mindfulness is used a lot. I mean, these days it's a bit of a, you know, I suppose a bit of uh, a, a trendy sort of term, but it's, it's incredibly, I mean, once again, it's an incredibly powerful sort of thing, but simple thing. And I guess that ties, that's like very closely aligned with what we were just saying, you know, the people, yeah. if, if you're doing whatever, so running a business or you're, you know, having, um, having a game of squash or whatever it is to be mindful about that to do, because I mean, in, in my mind anyway, you, you can't really, I don't know what you think, but you can't really add any value to yourself or to, or to other people or to a business unless you've got a certain mindfulness about it that you're in the moment and you're doing whatever that task is well. Well, you can. You can. You can get lucky. Yeah, you but can, that's not you with... A, you, can be in a, you can be in a totally different space and do something that that has an impact on the business that is that is a great impact and has and adds a heap of heap of value yeah but you could be in a totally different mind space you don't have to be in that space however if you're consistently not in the mindset of focusing on what it is to grow that business or grow yourself or 
then you're not going to be 100% focused on it. So those random one-off things, trying to have those random one-off things continue to happen consistently takes work. Yeah, true. But you could also, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I would probably agree with that. But then at the same time, like, is it, you know, if, if, you, if, I mean, if something happens, whatever it is that um, brings some level of success or whatever to your business and it hasn't come by design or, or intention or being mindful about it, will it reach some sort of point where you've never really understood why that happened in the first place and because it hasn't been by, you know, some sort of more specific thought process, you know, then it hits a point where you don't really understand and, and then you hit like some um, sort of crisis point. I'll probably use like the idea of, um, you know, just getting work organically from a marketing point of view that you um, say you're a builder and you start your business and for whatever reason you, you had friends and colleagues and other people who do a great job and you always have done a great job and you've had plenty of work, but one day the work dries up and you've never had to do any marketing or you've never actually, you've never really had a realization about why you got the work in the first place because there was no intention behind it. You know, whilst it's, it's obviously great that you've always had that work, I've sort of seen this, that exact scenario happen numerous times because then it hits a crisis point where people go, I actually don't know how to, how to do these other things. I actually don't know how to get work because I've never understood how I got it in the first place. True. Yeah, you see that all the time. And generally what happens is people rely on word of mouth and then they get to a point where that dries up and they go, holy shit, now I've, got, now I've got to, how do I go about getting business? It's just come to me before. Whereas now I have to go, okay, well, now I need to go out and get, and get business. Yeah. So in very, terms of, but, if you, but if you were, if you were valuing yourself, you would, as you were going through, you would be aware of where your business was coming from and you would be investing in you or you would be investing in your networks to see, okay, well, if this work's been coming from these particular areas, if I build those relationships, then potentially they are going to then provide me with an opportunity to be able to increase my networks in the word of mouth sphere. Now, if this, if this work was randomly coming from somewhere and you had no idea how it was coming to you, then that would be like what you were talking about before in terms of stuff happening without having any idea of where it was coming from. Yeah, or you kind Just of ran, like... Random, was... random stuff. But it, in terms of if you are... And we get back to, you know, valuing you means you're valuing your business. If you're valuing yourself, what you do is you actually are looking at where your business is coming from, hmm. building those relationships, spending more time in that space to go, okay, well, you know, if things were to slow down, what is it that's going to recession proof my business? What are the things that are going to be able to allow me to be still getting in front of a big, a big enough network to be able to ensure that, that I've still got access to quality people to look at work and, and ensuring that work keeps coming in. Yeah. And if I value myself, I will invest in that and I will become conscious of what it is that's bringing work into my business so that I can then develop those networks or create another network that means that if one slows down, I have access to another one. Yeah. I, so I think build, actually, yeah. yeah, I think actually that's, as, as probably like a good, um, uh, that's almost the catalyst for a whole other podcast, really the idea of sort of, you know, awareness about all that too. It's, it's you know, very, very closely aligned, um, you know, to what we've been speaking about the whole time. And yeah. on that note, Paul, have you got, have you got any, just at the um, end now of the podcast, have you got any more uh, value that you'd like to add to this podcast? I got heaps, so I could talk for days. 
<laughs> okay, okay, let's just, let's leave, just start the but timer. I'll leave, but I'll leave, uh, I'll leave you with three, three key things that will help you um, realize your value, um, which Me. I think we've cut. No, Me. everyone. Oh, okay. Not just you, just because <laughs> there are other people listening to this podcast. Oh, oh yes. Um, yes. Yeah, it's not us just having coffee and chatting. Um, so three things that uh, they can help speed up that valuing yourself, valuing your business process. One is getting clear on the feeling you want and then starting with that and working that into your business. So that's number one. So the feeling. Number two, own you, your development and your standards. If you own your standards, own what you're doing, then your team get to see what's expected because you're being what you want them to be. Hmm. So that's two. So own you, your development, your standards. And then three, look at what truly matters and do more of it. Hmm. Which then ties back to that element of outsourcing where you can to be able to free up your time to be able to do more of what it is that, you know, why you got into business in the first place. Well, Ultimately, you want to be able to do it, do more of the things that give you the buzz. Um, so then, work out what that is, what you're good at, and you get other people to be able to take other stuff off your plate. Yeah, well, like you said before, good things come in threes. So that was that was great. Have you got? Um, have you got? Uh, would you like to treat those as as your end of podcast quotes, or have you got another? Yes. Yeah, that'll, that'll okay. be. That'll be uh, for me. That'll be uh, that'll be quality. Okay, that sounds good. That's a great, fantastic way to finish the podcast. Just just as we finish, just let everyone know. Um, yet again, best way to get in contact with you and how to find you online. Uh, so I am online. I'm on Instagram as Brisbane Business Coach. So Brisbane underscore Business underscore Coach. Um, I'm on. Facebook, which is Mentorus Group. Um, my website is uh, mentorusgroup.com.au and email, phone, whatever. I'm on social media, so if you want to get in contact, we have a free 20-minute um, conversation up front to, to see whether um, we're able to help uh, people listening to the podcast. So if they want to know whether there's something that we can help them with, then we can have a 20 minute consultation for free. Um, and then post that we can look at options to be able to help them uh, on an ongoing basis. Thanks, Paul. As always, a pleasure. And thanks so much for, for um, all that. Really fantastic. And with that in mind, that's actually it again for today, guys. Thanks so much for listening into our podcast. Before we go, please, as usual, leave your feedback as well as any suggestions for topics you would like us to discuss in future episodes. Thanks again for listening to the Grey Business Podcast and we'll see you again soon. Bye, guys. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of Grow Your Business.